future. I pray that God will give you an expectant end, a glorious end. It's like we didn't come with amen to church today. Your future will be bright and great. His purpose for your life will be made manifest. This morning, we studied David's life throughout the month of May. Now, this morning as well, we are going to continue. And from this morning, I told us last week, we are going to start looking at some virtues I see in his life. Now, these virtues are part of the things that God used to give him an extraordinary end. You know, throughout last week, we kept reading the summary of David's life in Chronicles, where the Bible says he lived so long, and when he was about going, he left his son behind. The Bible says he lived in wealth and honor. Now, today we are going to look at one of the virtues within the limited time I have. I took time to study it. And let's go to 2 Samuel. Let's start with the scripture. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 20 to 23. I took time to, to, to observe David's life very well. And I, I see, you know, clear what I call, I see gratitude in his life. I see David as a man of gratitude. A man of gratitude. A man that really appreciated what he had. David was a thanks giver. Now let's look at the scriptures. Let's read after the count of three. One, two, three, and let's go. When David returned home to bless his household, Mika, daughter of Saul, came out to meet him and said, How the king of Israel has distinguished himself today, disrobing, disrobing, in the sight of the slave girls of his servants as any vulgar fellow would. Yes. David said to Miguel, it was not, sorry, it was before the Lord who chose me rather than your father or anyone from his house when he appointed me ruler over the Lord's people, Israel. I will celebrate before the Lord. Move on. We stop at 23. I will become even more undignified this day. I will be humiliated in my own eyes. But by this slave, this slave girls you spoke of, I will be held in honor. Verse 23. And Miguel, daughter of Saul, had no children to the day of her death. Had no children to the day of her death. Now let's look at the lesson from this particular passage. Now there's a very, very important lesson. And the lesson I see in this particular pa passage is that I see David as a thanks. One of the things that made David a great man before the Lord because I discovered that God loves thanksgivers. In case you don't know, I will show you examples as we go on. God loves thanksgivers. Now, that's why when David was writing uh, Psalm 100, give us Psalm 100. You know, he's the author of the book of Psalms, most of the Psalms. Now, when he was collating Psalm 100, look at what David said about thanksgiving. Now, he was writing his experience. He said, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Yes, shout to the Lord for joy, all the earth. Verse 2, let's go on, let's go on. We are reading the whole verse. Worship the Lord with what? With gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Joyful songs. Know that the Lord is good. Is God, sorry. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. He now said in verse 4, he said, enter his gates with what? Thanksgiving. Wait. With what? Thanksgiving. David was able to differentiate in between praise and thanksgiving. The Bible says, and into his court. With what? With, pra with praise. Give thanks to him. Just wait in this verse. For enter into his gates with thanksgiving. 
Now, anytime you are coming to the gates of God, David said, ah, you don't understand. This is the thing that has worked for me all my life. All my life on earth. Every single time I want to approach God, I approach God with thanksgiving. I approach God with thanksgiving. And that was the same thing that happened in that Second Samuel chapter 6 that we read. The Bible says he danced and danced and danced. You know, in those days, look up. One of the ways by which you identify kings. Now look at the way I'm dressed now. It, one of the ways you identify kings is that there's what we call a royal robe. They put on top of their clothes. It's like this suit I'm wearing now. A roy now this jacket, you know, is like in those days, a royal robe. Only kings wear it. If I remove the jacket, I become a common man like others. So David started dancing and dancing and dancing and dancing. He's the only one putting on the royal robe because he's the king. Now, he danced and danced and danced. He got to a point. He just removed the thing and threw it on the floor. Ah! And his wife, you know, the wife is the daughter of King Saul. She had been in, an, in the palace all her life. She understands palace life. She now said, what is my master? What's my husband doing? He has made himself so common. He now looks like one of those slaves. Why is my husband behaving like one of those slaves? Then she came out to meet David and said, oh God, David, uh -uh, what happened? Today you dishonor yourself. You dress like one of those slaves. You remove your royal robe. And David told her the reason. He said, do you know why I am dancing today? I am not dancing because of any other thing, but because God preferred me. I don't know why he has chosen me. He didn't go to your family to choose any other person to reign after the deaths of your father. He chose me, an ordinary shepherd boy. Now, let me start by saying, what is thanksgiving? What is thanksgiving? Let's start from there. What is thanksgiving? Or, let's make it, let's personify it. Let's say, who is a thanksgiver? Bracket that what is thanksgiving, right in front of it, who is a thanksgiver? Who is a thanksgiver? Let me answer it that way. Who is a thanksgiver? He is anyone that is able to recognize the favor he has received, no matter how small, and goes ahead to show appreciation for it. Now I come again. A thanksgiver is he or should I say is anyone that is able to recognize the favor he has received, no matter how small, and goes ahead to show appreciation for it. Anyone who is able to recognize. Now, go back to that first, second Samuel chapter 6. Show us only verse 21. Let's see the reason why David had to the robe. Now, I, I said two things here I want us to pay attention to. Number one, a thanksgiver must be able to what? Number one, act, recognize. You know, there are so many people living their life, they have not been able to recognize one thing that God has done for them. They have not been able to recognize one thing that anyone has done. So, if you, uh, until you are able to recognize the favor you have received, you are not yet ready for thanksgiving. Now, it is the recognition of that favor that gets our hearts ready. Hello? It is the recognition of that favor that gets... Now, look at what David said in verse 21. David said to Miga, it was before the Lord who chose me rather than your father or anyone in his house, which means in any way I didn't fit or qualify to be king. Just like you know now, in the, in the central house of APC, out of about 18 of them, they have called them to nine. Now, they are still screening. They are still screening. Nine is out of the thing. Another nine is still standing, waiting for the position of, I'm going to be the presidential candidate of APC. Now, and David is saying, uh -uh, there are people in your father's house. God didn't choose them. There are people, you know, among your brothers. God didn't choose them. He chose me. I didn't know why he chose me. The first thing to, that will make you a thanksgiver is the ability to be able to recognize the that you are showing. And listen, I will tell you truly, if you can look clearly, there is no day you don't enjoy favor from God. 
I will show you as we go on deep there in the, deep, in the deep, deepest place of the vision. Now, and not only being able to recognize, some people recognize and stop there. One more one should reform or even a man Now, to now complete the table of thanksgiving, the Bible says such a person should go ahead to show gratitude. I remember one day, you know, I was just at home, you know, I was at home. I was, uh, I was just at home. I was just at home that day. I was not happy. I was just thinking of so many things. You know, I was thinking of this, this work of God that we are doing. You know, I was just frustrated somehow. You know why I was frustrated? I was frustrated because of the attitude of our people. I was frustrated because you know, when you preach a message that is from God, somebody will come up and say, Pastor, use me to preach. You know, I was frustrated because that's why I had to go so far. That day I was so angry. I was so angry. So I decided that I was just thinking at home, maybe I will just leave this thing. Maybe I should just find my way. I was thinking of maybe leaving to either Lagos, find my way to Paracourt, or just leave Ibadan and leave the church. But do you know that right there in the house, I got a message from one brother in Abuja. He just sent a text message. He said, Papa, the message you preached this morning is like you are in our room. I and my wife has been battling so many things. But you preached to us and our peace is restored. Instantly, joy came to my heart. It, your thanksgiving is not complete if you don't go ahead to show appreciation. How can you say, I, I, know, I, know, that, I know that God has been good, but how have you shown God that he has been good? That's why David had to remove his garment. He danced and danced and danced and the rope. I, be, I believe God is moved. For you to know that God is moved, God had to make his wife to become barren for that singular act of making David to feel that what he did was nonsense. Who is a thanksgiver? Hello? And you know, so many children of God, that's where we stop. Yes, we know that we have, we have received favor, but we don't go ahead to show appreciation. Not even only to God. Most times, we don't even go ahead to show appreciation even to the human, humans that God used to show us kindness. Most times. Hello, me tell you more Let me ask your neighbor, are you a thanksgiver? I can't hear you. So David said, this is the reason why I'm dancing. This is the reason why I'm praising God. Anytime my mentor is having his birthday. Now, maybe it is level of training. I don't know yet. But I'm still praying that you'll get there. By the time we go to his office, we that are his sons, this past birthday, we gave him 500,000 naira as gift. When we were presenting the check, I was glad. Now, and where he sat, he was telling us, he said, one person in our church gave me 30 million as birthday present. He said, and the person said, Papa, for your teachings over the years, your teachings over the years has built us up. So I just came to say, happy birthday. Now, most of you don't know what thanksgiving does to the giver. If God is glad that you are thanking him, do you think man will not do more if you appreciate him? Now, you will see, when you get to his office, you see different kind of ampers. People are coming. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. God's power, learn it. Your pastor is not your enemy. Even if the truth is hitting you, he's preaching the truth because he loves you. We have one girl in our, in our school. We just brought her in the eleven school. We just, they just brought her this third time. They brought her from one school, primary three. So they now brought her to our school. Two letter words she cannot read. She cannot even identify to write one to three hundred. And I told that, that I said, in our own school, nursery two writes one to five hundred. So now we were now talking. I got to the school and I was asking her. That was three days after. I, Do you love your teacher? He said, No, I don't love my teacher. Ah. I said, Why? 
The teacher said, sir, she can't love me. I said, why? He said, because she always gets zero in all the assignments we give her. Sir, what do we do? Do we return her back to primary one? I said, she's going to be nine. They just brought her from another school. So I asked her. I said, do you love your auntie? He said, no. Why? He said, my auntie used to beat me. I now ask her, do you love the doctor? She kept quiet. I said, why? She kept quiet. I said, the doctor that gives you injection when you are sick, do you love the doctor? He said, no. I said, see, there are some times for you to be healed, you have to receive injection. If you hate the doctor for giving you injection, then you don't know what you are doing. The doctor that is injecting you is injecting you because he wants you to be healed. And that's what so many of you don't like. God loves thanksgivers. David lived as a thanksgiver. That's why I showed us Upper Sunday. You will see that when David came back from the battle, what did he do? The Bible said he distributed gifts to elders. So for thanksgiving to complete, what are the two things? Number one, you have to recognize the kindness you have received. And number two, you have to go ahead to what? To show appreciation. Let's go to the next question. I'm rushing because of time. Why is it that as, thanksgi as thanksgivers exist, there are people who are not thankful in any way? Why is it that as thanksgivers exist, there are people who are not thankful in any way? Let's answer that question. Now, you know, where you see some people dancing and praising, God is good though. You see some people say, hey, wo, are you a Sue me, Jerry? I'm tired of this world. In fact, I'm tired. I don't even know whether I should go and hang myself. I'm just tired. In fact, I'm tired. I'm fed up. What? Let's answer that question. Let me come again. Why is it that as thanksgivers exist, there are people who are not thankful in any way? Listen, the difference between the two of them, I'm answering you now, is that each of them decides to give their attention, sorry, is what each of them has decided to give their attention to. The difference between the thanksgiver and the complainant is what they have decided to give their attention to. What are you looking at? It is what you look at that determines the, your, your attitude. I come again. It is what you look at that determines your kind of attitude. What you look at determines your attitude. What you look at determines your attitude. Listen, Miguel was angry with David because he appeared like a slave when he removed his royal robe. But David, in his own case, was looking at how God completely changed his level. From an ordinary shepherd boy to a king. Can you see that they were both looking at two different things? Miguel sat down and was looking at David from the... Ah, ah, that was what she was looking at. But David in his own case, he was looking at, ah, me. That I used to say, stay with the sheep. And I'll be telling them, so me, I'm now the king. It is what you are looking at that determines your attitude. If you continue to look at your challenges, you will never live as a thanksgiver. Stop looking at your challenges. Can I tell you this truth? Even in your challenges, if you look at your challenges well, you will see that you still have a testimony in that challenge. You didn't hear me. <laughs> now, somebody that is saying, I'm just tired of life. I'm just tired of life. Hey, where to sue me? Who where to sue me? Do you know my rent has... I don't know. I'm just tired. I'm just tired of life. I don't know where to go next. Sir, ma, there is somebody living on the street that does not have a landlord. You are better off. That mad lady, mama, yeah, I am Mama Napono, the lady, at the junction here. It was a young man that was praying for him. They now came to call me. When we got there, I brought clothes. We went there to dress her. As I dressed her, the young man said, sir, Please, sir, I am an insurance man. I'm working here. You are the pastor. I took the mad woman by hand like this. Brought her to church. Gave her food to eat. 
trim thy hair. Take her to go take her bath. Now, after she took her bath, it's like they made covenant with water and madness for her. The thing came back again. She went back to her spot. She sees herself as landlady in that place. When she's hungry, she will come here and stay in front of the church. She'll be looking for me. I will give her food. When she finished, she will return there. Are you not better than that person? You old landlord, are you not better? She's naked, but she doesn't know that she's naked. Some will say, Pastor, you don't understand. You don't understand. Pastor, you don't understand. You don't understand. I, 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 at this my age, for me not to have a child of my own. Ah. You are complaining that you don't have a child. Some people, their, parents, their children are praying for them to die in the health condition that they are in. It is what you choose to see that determines your attitude. That's why I wrote that in my notes. Deliberately make up your mind. That you will choose to see the act of God in your life. No matter how small. Say here. Say here. I wrote here. If you choose to give your attention to the challenging things around you, you will see plenty. Because there's this law of life. Whatever you choose to see, you will see in abundance. I was using a Mazda, Mazda, Mazda Millennium car before. Now, before we use that Mazda Millennium, we were using this, uh, um, uh, what's the name of this uh, 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 Jeep that we were using before? This um, Holy Spirit. Range Rover. The moment I bought a Range Rover, I didn't used to see it before. But the moment I bought it, and I started driving on the road, I started counting. Ah, uh ah, -uh, I want your Range Rover go. That's what I've been looking for on the road. And that's what I was saying. Now, before we bought, we, we saw that one, we bought a millennium. That uh, uh, Mazda millennium. Before we bought it, I've never seen it anywhere before. The first place I saw it, I loved the car. We bought the car. The moment we bought it, I said, okay, let me even see whether people are using it. I discovered that there was no day I didn't see anybody using it. Then, we got a Suzuki. When we got this Suzuki Jeep, before, the first place I saw it was the man that wanted to sell. But I discovered that the moment I started using it, I, said, uh, I told my wife, let's begin to look. Uh, Suzuki, let's be looking at. Do you know we started discovering? Somebody was, my wife would say, see, see, see Suzuki, see Suzuki. Then we now got this uh, uh, Akura. Before we bought it, I could hardly count two. That I've seen. So when we now bought it, I now told my wife, let's even check whether this car, people are using it. I discovered that it got to a point, I started telling you, it's like this car is what people are using now. That's not what people are using now. It's because that's what I'm looking for. Anything you choose to see, you will see plenty. If you marry and you are looking at your husband and you choose to see fault, ah, you will keep seeing fault. If you choose to see what is good, you will keep seeing. Anything you choose to see, you will see in abundance. It's the law of life. That's why, deliberately make up your mind that you stop seeing negative things. Go and find out all those people that attend churches where they see visions of uh, battles and battles and battles. There is no service they don't see battles. <laughs> One of my brothers, uh, my brother-in-law, he said he dressed, he went to his church. He said, as he entered the church, his prophet started prophesying. The prophet now said, Ah, ah, atunri ogun, ogun, ogun. But that any, onya, londi wa. Ogun te eri, 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 lati January or December. Atun wa no rutu to on the one. You know what he said? Olo kwa mbosho on. On juicy bag. On de kumbe. Ibu lewa lo. Oni mo padalo leni. Anything you choose to see, Listen, you will see it in abundance. But if you want to remain as a thanksgiver, make up your mind. I don't want to see you again. If I choose to look at your attitude, I won't pass for you again. All of you. But I made up my mind, I will continue to call you the best congregation in the kingdom of God. You didn't say amen to that. 
So what are you looking at? Ask your neighbor, what are you looking at? I didn't hear you. You can do better. Shout it aloud now. Make a deliberate choice to live as a thanksgiver. Because thanksgiving is a choice. Thanksgiving is a choice. Now, let me show you this. The disciples came to Jesus. Master, this congregation have been with us for three days. They've been hearing the word of God for three days. They have not eaten. What do we do? Let's better send them out now. Let them go look for food. Or else, hey, something will happen. <laughs> Jesus said to them, tell them to sit down. Ah! Okay. No problem. What do we have? They said, sir, we have five loaves of bread. Have you? And two fishes. Jesus said, put them in groups of fifties. We are going to feed them. Ah, one of the disciples, I believe, okay, oh, it was Philip that asked. Oh, no, I, don't, I can't remember. But I suspect it to be Thomas. Because Thomas doesn't see anything good. Thomas is the man that when they say Jesus resurrected, he said, show me his hand. Are you the one? Let me see your hand. I was there when they were nailing you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, so Jesus said, see them in 50s, we are going to distribute. The disciples said, sir, you don't understand. We have over 5,000 men. And you know, in every church, eh, if you have 5,000 men, permit me to tell you, you have 25,000 women. Women respond to God. Men. Before you have a man, you must have, catch, uh, you must have caught 10 men, women. Jesus said, tell them to sit. You know what the disciples were looking at? The disciples were looking at the number of bread and the number of the people. But Jesus, the Bible says, gave thanks. Which means he was looking at God. What do you choose to see? There are several marriages there is no joy. You know why there is no joy? You have chosen to be looking at the error of your spouse. Look at how he talked to me. He's not even touch. He's always babbling, look at, look at, look at, look at his head. He does not even look like my boss in the office. Look at his glasses. How did they? Now, whatever you choose to look at is what determines your attitude. If you choose to look for what is good, I'm telling you, go and find out. You will see plenty. That's why somebody said, one of the laws of the, a disloyal servant, hear me, if you have a staff that is always pointing to your fault, sack them. Any staff that is always pointing to your fault, sack them. That person has become disloyal. And you see that you'll be seeing more of your faults. Organ control your care for colleague now. Organ bash your bash your care bounce or colleague bounce or now. I choose, I choose to see the favor of God in my life. Say it boldly. One more time. Quickly. Third question. Okay, before I finish the third question, just write this one down. Deliberately decide, that's to summarize question two, deliberately decide that you will start focusing on the favors you enjoy. Just make up your mind. That you will start focusing on the favors you enjoy. Make up your mind. Question three. What is the major sign that reveals an ungrateful person? What is the major sign that reveals an ungrateful person. The answer is grumbling. The number one sign that reveals an ungrateful person is grumbling. They grumble a lot. They murmur. Listen. The devil will show them. Sorry. The devil will show the, them present needs always. Anytime the devil wants to make you to as an ungrateful person, he shows you present needs, always. 
And I've told you, in this life, there is no realm that you get to without needs. But don't let the devil put your attention too much on present needs. That's why you will grumble. Now look at this, a, a, a clear illustration. Israel just crossed the Red Sea. It's a miracle. They didn't swim. People that travel abroad. Now when I was going to, uh, uh, was going to South Africa, we didn't even get to the Red Sea. We passed by the side. Because there's this TV at the back of your seat. You can choose to be watching movie, comedy, or anything. And you can choose to be watching how the plane is flying. So, because of fear, it was my first time on the plane. I wanted to know. So that if we are going to crash, let me know where we will crash into. So, I put it where the plane is flying. So, I now we're, we're driving, I'm uh, sorry, we're flying beside the Mediterranean Sea. towards going to South Africa. Beside. So, when we get to a rocky place, I see it. Rock under. Ah, I'm a you know, I you know. Now, people that tra travel far like uh, America said, when they get above the Red Sea, there's this shake. That till the plane we cross, it will be shaking. It's like the Red Sea is trying to pull. That's why the pilots will announce that getting to the Red Sea, it will go higher than the normal flight. So, and when it goes so high, they say if you go low, the Red Sea used to pull things down. The plane will now be vibrating. It will be vibrating. It, Israel crossed that kind of sea, not by flight. God divided it. They saw God divided it. They went across. They saw God close the sea. Egyptian army died inside. As they finished crossing the water to drink, they started grumbling. If you focus on your present need, eh, you will forget your past victories. Imagine. They were the ones dancing now. Hey, oh, tishé, oh, baba, tishé. We don't cross, oh, we don't cross, oh, oh boy. This God is real, oh. The God of Moses is real, oh, oh boy. God of Moses is real, oh. God of Moses. They just got out. They walked a bit. They were thirsty. Moses, ah, if you if we know you'll have left us in, in Egypt. You will have left us in Egypt in that place. Oh, there is enough water in Egypt. Enough water. They started grumbling. That's an ungrateful person. An ungrateful person easily forgets the favors they are shown. And it's you, Mori. Then look at it. God said to Moses. Take that wood, cast it into that river, it will become sweet water. They drank. Ah, they were happy. They walked for a while. They needed food. Ah, ah. These are people that just drank miracle water. They need, ah, Moses, Moses, Moses. If you have known, you will have left us in Egypt. Ah, you will have left us in Egypt. There was enough food in Egypt. God got angry and said, will I kill these people? Moses said, no, don't kill them. You know what God did? Before their very eyes, they saw food falling like rain. They call it the bread of angels. They took it. Food that they didn't labor for. They ate for some time. These same people came up. Ah, there was lettuce and cucumber in Egypt. Oh, ah, we have not tasted meat since we have left. If we have known, we would have gone back to Egypt. Ah, 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 Egypt, Egypt, Egypt. Ah, ah. In Egypt, did, rain, did food fall like rain? Ungrateful people. What's it that day? Oluman you remember Nong Bami. One small misunderstanding happened. You pack your things, you want to leave the church. You've forgotten the pastor who was there when you were nothing. You've forgotten the pastor who you was there when you were struggling, who fasted and prayed for you to get to where you get to, you are, you now get to a point. That's gateway to ungratefulness. God now said to Moses again, Moses, don't worry. I will give them meat. They will eat to the point that it will come out of their nose. Before their eyes, wind gathered bird and put in front of them. They slaughtered it. They ate very well. 
Moses now said, you know what? God said he wants to see me on the mountain. I'm coming. I'll be there for some time. They waited for Moses for 40 days. Don't forget, they just finished eating meat. And they are still eating the meat. The Bible said the meat was so much that it was coming out of their nose. They said, hey, Aaron, this Moses fellow, we don't even know whether he's dead. We don't know whether he's coming back. Make for us a God uh -uh, that will take us back to Egypt. Ma? Steve, Nick, yes. <laughs> and they form an idol from their earrings and chains. They put cloth on it. They started prostrating. Look at me. Don't be that kind of a person. What, do you, what did I say? Don't be that kind of a person. I beg you. Always pray that God should help you to remain grateful. If anybody contributed one naira for your lifting, go and write it down. Because one thing with we humans is that we easily forget. Go and write it down. I was talking to one of our sisters. I said, is this the time to leave your husband? Have you forgotten? She was looking at me. He's the one that said, okay, no, no, no. This red meat thing cannot go. Now, our papa is saying you should go into addressing. He puts money down to put, tell you to go and learn. You went, went to learn. He put money down for your freedom. You did freedom. He did Okada. Enter contribution. Got that money for you to rent shop. Anytime he comes back from his Okada business, you will tell him, uh, 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 Dali, 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 I don't have mirror. He will go and do Okada. I remember one day, he finished doing Okada. He quickly ran back. He said, I've got the children eating. Yeah, take, go and cook. Let me peacefully sit, go out and do it. Is this this time? That you are now beautiful. That you now look like somebody. That you will leave him. You know what the husband said? He said one day I enter a shop. I saw one man touching her back. I now ask her. You say my own hand is hard. Is it this man's hand that is soft? All on could have Ah, in your manga, Gurio. That's why I keep telling, I used to tell my wife, if I leave you, God will judge me. Because of the roles you have played in my life. Don't be like these Israelites. I'm showing you well, why people are ungrateful. Especially some of you children. Do you know how much, how many, how many contributions your, your parents enter to send you to school? I used to tell my children too. If, if you know the number of contributions I'm doing, I'm a wife for you to go to school. People become ungrateful because they what? They forget. What will a new pastor come and tell you? At least 90% of some of you here started following the grace of God in my life when you were youth. Before any wife could believe in you. What will a new pastor now come and say? That will now make you to say, ah, that pastor prince will woe. People become ungrateful when they forget the favors they have received. Let me rush it. I don't have time. Never allow a present need make you forget past victories. There will always be present needs. No matter what you face today, always remember past victories. No matter what you face today, always remember past victories. Quickly, 
How can I develop a thanksgiving attitude? Let me be quick with that. How can I develop a thanksgiving attitude? Are you getting something? Sister Odebu, me, Ola Bisi, you are welcome. I saw her now. God bless you. I don't know how your name finds access to my heart. The Lord will bless you. I'm always praying for you, eh? You are blessed. How? Deliberately point out on a constant basis the act of God in your life, no matter your situation. Deliberately point out the act of God in your life, no matter your situation. I will tell you a story. Now, you know what that means? No matter what you are facing, look for what you can see to thank God for in that situation. No matter what you are facing. At least if you are crying for children's school fees, you should thank God that you have children. <laughs> have you? Somebody have the money but they don't have children. Somebody is crying for money for fuel. Thank God you have car. Somebody don't have car. Talk less of going to petrol station. <laughs> now, I read this story I want to tell you now in one book I read some time ago. This man has this attitude. Every single time they tell him to speak, he will say, I want to thank God because God has always been giving me everything I want. Everything I need in life, God has been giving me. So one man got angry in the congregation and said, Stop saying, giving all the glory to God for what people are doing for you. While he was saying it, he said, I thank God that you don't understand the God I'm speaking about. The man said, I will prove you wrong. So the next day morning, this young man woke up, opened his door, and made some gifts. Raw food. He needed food. He brought it and put it in his door. He came out again and said, Ah, Father, you have brought food to my doorstep this morning. Thank you for this food you have given to me. Not knowing that the man that brought the food was the one that wanted to prove him wrong. He had told some people to come around. So while he was saying, Father, thank you again, the man came out with a lot of people. Yes. Maybe I tell you that it's not God. How can you say it is God? You say your shoe is God. This food, I dropped it just this morning to prove to you that your God cannot give you anything. You know what that man said? Thank you, Lord, for using my enemy to bring food to me. <laughs> then the young man kept quiet. That if it is not that God put it in your heart and use you, you won't bring it. Which means that in every situation, if you look clearly, you will see reasons to give thanks. Am I communicating? Let's take the last part. I'm late today. I took time this morning. Sorry for that. Quickly. Does Thanksgiving pay? Does it pay? Does it pay? The answer is yes. It motivates whoever gives thanks. Sorry. Whoever you give thanks to. To do extraordinary things. Or extraordinary more. Thanksgiving motivates anyone you give thanks to to do more. At least, anytime eh, I look at the fridge, there's a fridge in my house. The men gave me that fridge. I think when I was celebrating my 40th. She 40th. Eh? Eh. Okay, okay, yeah. That time, I think it was Pastor Michael that was a King's Men Fellowship then. Anytime I see that fridge, my heart is encouraged. Even the TV in my house. I think that time it was uh, some, one person or two was a leader at that time. The gas cooker, the four burner, the gas cooker I'm using. So, it was one of the, uh, I think the women, no, it, the women gave me the chair in my office and the table in my office. See, every single time you give thanks, eh, the person that you are thanking is motivated to do more. That's why I'll show you three examples. When Jesus was about to raise Lazarus from the dead, 
What did he do? He said, Father, I thank you that you always hear me. And I know that this one I'm saying, you will hear me. Lazarus! God didn't disappoint. <laughs> Come forth! And the Bible says, he that was dead came back. This teaching I'm teaching you, I'm not teaching you because you should only do it to God. Do it also to men. When you buy things for your parents, go back home to present to them. Tell them, Daddy, I just want to thank you. Mommy, I just want to thank you in this little way. I saw how my wife was happy when our children, during her birthday, organized. Though they, I couldn't keep their secrets. I told her, I don't know the kind of vegetable that your mommy gave me. That I, couldn't, I can't keep her secret. Even when they tell me that, Daddy, don't tell mommy. Don't tell mommy. Somebody's coming to blow trumpet the second day. I woke up at night. Oh, money came out for you. Oh, blah, blah. <laughs> oh, God. So anything you don't want her to know, don't tell me. You know, but she was happy. When the children brought cake for her, she was glad. Most of you don't know that Thanksgiving is application for more. Don't make yourself a burden to anybody. You always say, give me, 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 give me. I know of members of this church. They have been here for years. Their one naira has never reached my hand. I'm not preaching this message to beg from you, but I know them. And they are the ones that have issues most. They are the ones that we want me to cancel them in the morning, the afternoon, the night, and in the evening. Do you know that even you as a staff working somewhere, there are times a gift can unlock the heart of your boss to bless you, to give you opportunities. Even God celebrates when we thank him. Look at another example. When bread and fish was not enough, what did Jesus do? Father, he lifted up the bread and drink and uh, the fish. Father, I thank you. Thanksgiving pays. And the moment he thanked God over it, the power of multiplication came to work. The bread and the fish began to multiply. Stop looking for faults. The last example on that, the sun's giving peace. We are still looking at it. When the enemies of Israel gathered together in the days of Jehoshaphat, what did he do? He organized a praise team. The Bible says, as they were singing and dancing, the enemies team up with them. And they started fighting themselves. The Bible said they helped themselves to destroy themselves. Can I tell you this truth as I round up? For see, and you know, there is nobody on earth that does not have what it takes to give thanks. Some of you are looking for, ah, I want it to become a car to give thanks. I just told you, we ministers gathered together and gave my mentor 500,000 euros. For one person, Gave him 30 million. He did not say we should not give him our own. He told us, he said, one student in their school came up to give him 1,000 naira. He was happy. You, a student, where did you get that money from? He said, Sir, it's my food money. I remember one Christmas. Was it two or three years ago? Or three, or, three, or, three or three years ago. The only chicken that came to our house was given by one of our sisters. I was so glad. I was so glad. The out is even a person I never expected. Thanksgiving is a gateway. Take it as, a, as an attitude. Last week I sowed some seeds. I'm, I'm running up with this. About 60 or 70,000. So I distributed it round. I gave one to Adeniji Street. They want to do street lights. So I gave them a part of my seed, my own contribution. I gave to one missionary. 
he succeeded to get one car that he came to thank me about if I see that car, I will call them from gates to come and pieces it. But you know, he's a missionary man. Benz 190. He was thanking God. He was so happy. So he needed money to balance. The part of my little, I sent to him. One of our keyboardists that was sick, he said, I sent money to him. So I was just, that money I was just led. Then the man that, one of the people that trained me in the Bible school, I sent a portion of that seed too to him. Did you know that everybody called to pray for me? The man that trained me just said, I saw the 10K you sent. Anyway, God bless you. It may not mean anything to him, but it means something to me. It may be little in his sight. It is not little in my sight. He's not the one that will bless me back. He's God. Make up your mind from today that you will live as a thanksgiver. The word thank you should not leave your mouth. Are you hearing me? For every favor you receive from today, make thank you part of your life. All the children that are here, it's not easy for your daddy or mommy walking to put food on the table. If you eat a meal, in Igbo, Igbo family, they will tell you, you hear thank man. Thanks, sir. Have you daddy? If an Igbo child finishes eating, they have trained them from childhood. Thanks, sir. Thanks, man. Because thanksgiving is application for more. Rise up on your feet if you are blessed. Oh, you are angry. You don't want to clap. Clapping, clap. If you don't want to clap, put your hand in your pocket, Joe. Sister Okoyemi, the Lord bless you.